Hello everyone, Neuralar here, and today I'm going to be reviewing a 600 amp emergency car jump starter. 600 amps. This car battery only has 730 cold cranking amps. Each of these batteries is only 100 amp hours. This is my utility panel in my house. And these wires, they only carry 200 amps. And that powers my entire house. This is a Yamaha inverter generator. It only has an 8 amp DC output, much less than 600 amps. And here's a typical automotive alternator. This is a 135 amp alternator, nowhere near 600 amps. Oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. And it's all inside this box. And here is the Best Tech 600 amp portable jump starter. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that Best Tech did offer to send me this product for review. And normally I refuse these sort of offers because I want impartial reviews, but Best Tech has been kind enough to say, yes, go ahead and do an honest review of the product. And that is what I intend to do. Uh, I do a lot of things with batteries and inverters, and this sort of product, there's a lot of what I would consider scam products out there. And uh, we're going to take a look at this one and see how this one really stacks up. Here's the box. They say it has overload protection, over temperature protection, short circuit protection, reverse polarity protection, and low voltage protection. And the best safety. Um, not sure what they're better than, but they're the best. It's offered in three different colors. Good to know, I guess. I don't really care if it sits in my trunk all the time. And let's zoom in on the back here and take a look quick at what the box advertises. They say it is 600 amps. I'm sure that's false, but that's not necessarily a problem with the product. You have to put something on the box that sells. So we're going to take a look at its actual capabilities and see if it really performs the intended purpose. And that really is what I'm going to judge it by. It also has a built-in light and a USB output for charging devices. So this could be very useful even if you don't use it to jumpstart your car as a portable power device to charge your phone or whatnot. SOS function, not sure what that is, we'll take a look. Overload and short circuit, reverse polarity, blah blah blah. It is a lithium battery, so it has to have a lot of these protections. Lithium batteries will start on fire if you don't, so I'm sure they do have those protections. Lithium polymer, charges at 1 amp, 10 gauge, uh, <laughs> 10 gauge alligator clamps, so obviously you can't do 600 amps through it, but that's okay. And down here they say USB type A, 5 volts, 2.1 amps max. Uh, I'm not going to be testing that specifically, but it is good to know that this can do a high output current. A lot of times the internal battery will be 12 volts or so, and they'll have an LDO that runs down to 5 volts, and it can only do 500 milliamps. This should be able to power all of your high power devices. So, enough of me talking, let's open the box. Looks like it comes in a handy little carrying bag, something you can throw in your trunk and forget about, probably. We'll zip this open and see what's inside. And this looks to be the actual battery. And I gotta say, there's just something immensely satisfying about the texture of this product. I'm not sure what it is exactly. Uh, something about the micro texture of it. But uh, anyway, it feels really good in your hand. But again, this thing is puny. It only weighs a few ounces, 600 amps. I'm not so sure about that. Looks like it comes with a power button, a light, and a couple of USB outputs, as well as a USB input, which is interesting. So I guess you can charge this off of USB or by plugging it into a wall. So that's kind of cool. Um, I did already take this out and charge it up. So it is fully charged. It took a couple hours for me to charge it right out of the box. And if you hold down the light, down the uh, power button, you get a nice flashlight here. I'm not going to compare this to other flashlights, but it is nice and bright. It's certainly not like a mag light, but uh, this is more than good enough to change your tire or something. It's actually a very useful light. And if you press the power button again, it starts flashing SOS. Which is kind of cool. I don't know how many people really know what SOS is, but... Um, I like that it does that, otherwise just an emergency flasher. If it's off and you hit the button, it just tells you the battery state of charge, which is fully charged in this case. 
overall the quality of this thing feels pretty good. Um, but what's important is does it do what is advertised? So we'll keep digging in here. Comes in this little cardboard carrier. So we're going to open this up, see what's inside. And it does come with a charger. I have already used this particular charger, plugged it in. Seems to work just fine. And you get some 10 gauge alligator clips here, which, uh, while they are pretty flimsy for 600 amps, they're constructed well enough for an emergency purpose. As well as a couple of other items here. You get a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, so you can actually charge this in your car every once in a while if you want. And this uh, Apple adapter. Now, I don't have any Apple products. I'm just going to assume that these all work. I mean, why wouldn't they? And then you get a user manual, and that's about it. The cigarette lighter adapter thing here doesn't appear to be the highest quality, but it doesn't really have to be. It only needs to supply one amp to charge this, so I'm not going to complain about it. But I do want to open it up and make sure that they put a fuse in it. Sometimes you get really cheap ones that don't have fuses. So this one does have a fuse and three amps. So yes, this is a very light duty cigarette lighter adapter, but that's just fine. And the way that you would connect this up to actually connect to your car, pull this little waterproof tab up and they have these connections. I don't know what you call them, but some sort of proprietary connection here. And you just press this on and it does mate very, very firmly. I'm impressed with that. At that point, it has this flashing light on it telling you that the outputs are not active on these clamps. This is the lithium battery, so they have to be worried about overload and whatnot, uh, reverse polarity so that you don't blow up the battery, start fires, all sorts of things for safety. And those safety things are going to be inside this plastic doohickey, which we'll open up and take a look at in the future here. But to actually activate it, you can hit this button. Now the outputs are active, and we'll be taking a look at that here in a little bit. And that really does make a solid connection to this. The construction quality of this, uh, of the alligator leads and such, seems pretty good really for the type of product that it is. So I have little doubt that this sort of stuff functions. What I'm going to be looking at is the jump start function because that is what's most suspect. So let's uh, first of all test the voltage of this fully charged battery pack. Here's the leads. I'm going to put the multimeter right into here. And it says 16.72 volts. And I like seeing that. 16 volts is not damaging to your vehicle. They could have chosen to put like a 24 volt battery in here or something and charged it with a boost converter, which they definitely do, because this is a 12 volt input. So they could have boosted it up to something higher to give you more jump start current, but that could potentially damage things in your vehicle. At this voltage, it's perfectly safe to use. Now, I would like to see what kind of circuitry they have in this little guy. Because right now, with the light flashing, if I actually hook up my multimeter to these alligator leads, I'll just uh, clamp this one here and clamp this one here. If I hook it up, you can see that there is no output voltage. So if I hit this button on the side so that light stops flashing, now I get my output voltage. So I'm kind of curious what's inside this thing because it has a switch, something that switches on and off the output voltage and current. So I'm going to open this up and see what's actually inside because I'm pretty curious before I continue. So let's see what's inside this magic little device. It's going to have to have a power switch and some sort of reverse polarity protection in it in order to protect that lithium ion battery. And this is what we have inside that magic little box. I'm actually rather impressed with this again. It's not super high quality, but you wouldn't expect that from a device of this price range. So what we have here is on top, I looked up the part numbers. These are 20 amp, 30 volt international rectifier diodes. And that's the rectification stage that I was talking about for reverse polarity protection. They are 20 amp continuous. So since this is only a light duty cycle, they can do way more than that. And down here, this is your switching part of it. So you can switch the current on and off. These are three FETs in parallel. They are 1.6 milliohms each and 30 volts. So 1.6 milliohms divided by three plus the resistance of these guys 
isn't all that much. Most of your resistance is going to come in these cables. And uh, this actually is fairly well made. The circuit board isn't super cheap. And I'm pretty happy with it, really. This is everything and more that I would expect this little device to have. It should protect it well. It should be reliable. And, uh, well, it's kind of how I would design it if I was doing it. So, uh, I'm just going to put this back together, and we're going to take a look at it again. Now, I had planned on testing this device on a car that had a bad battery. This is a bad battery. I was going to put this battery in the car and try jump-starting it. But, for better or worse, I sold that car, no longer have it. So, I need to come up with some other way of testing this, and I don't actually want to put a bad battery in my other cars. So, what I have instead is this. I've done a review on this. It works extremely well. It tells you the resistance of a battery and the cranking amp ability of it. So we're going to take this meter and use it on this jump start pack. Now I can't just clamp these clamps from this analyzer directly up to these because they have to have a good connection and on both sides of the clamp. So what I'm going to do instead is this. I'm going to connect my battery analyzer like this, one connection to one post, another connection to another post of an unrelated battery, and I'll take the positive of this one, connect it up to this post, and the negative of this one to this post. So I'm just using these posts as a connection point. There's no actual uh, um, connection between these two batteries. And now I have my battery analyzer connected up directly to this. There's no battery in the circuit just directly up to this, but it won't turn on because I need to enable that, that switch that's inside here. And those three FETs are now on and I can turn on my analyzer. So we're just going to tell it 500 cold cranking amps. This is rated for 600, so that should be reasonable. And uh, let's test. It's now testing this jump start pack. And there we go. 16.46 volts and 73 milliohms. That'll include the, yeah, be quiet. That'll include the resistance of these wires, which are fairly thin, the resistance of all the stuff inside this magic box that I uh, had showed, and most importantly, the resistance of the actual battery pack down there, which is going to be the largest resistance of all. And it just shut off. <clears throat> So this uh, timer inside this box just shut off. It only lets you enable it for 30 seconds or so at a time, which is perfectly reasonable. They don't want you to overload your lithium battery or any of the switches inside of there. So there we are, about the same reading again. And let's see the cranking amps. 84 cold cranking amps. For regular cranking amps, it's probably going to be uh, a little over 100 or so but that's nowhere near 600. But that's not necessarily a huge problem. If this thing really can supply 100 amps, this alone is going to be enough to start your car in most cases. And that's pretty impressive from something that is just this size. Uh, that was just a theoretical test with a conductance meter. Let's do an actual real test and see how much current this thing really puts out. Not just the conductance meter, but actually measuring the current. And here is my test setup. I know it looks a little bit confusing, so let me explain what's going on here. I'm using this inverter as a load. This will emulate your starter, for example. And uh, you're probably not surprised that I'm using an inverter. I've done a lot of inverter videos. This multimeter is connected up directly to the battery terminals. The exact same place that my jump start pack is going to be connected to. The inverter is connected to the battery terminals. So that's like your starter, and the jump start pack is connected directly to the terminals as well. Um, so that is going to measure the voltage at the battery. We know that this voltage is about 16 and a half volts at the jump start pack, minus the voltage drop through those diodes and the FETs inside here and the cables. I'm going to use this electric heater as a load for the battery. So when I turn the heater on to high, it's going to draw maybe 150 amps or so out of this battery to power the inverter. At that point, I'm going to take my jump start pack and connect it up over here to the, uh, to the other battery terminal and read how much current the jump start pack is putting into the battery. So let's start out here. Turn my heater on high. 
you can see that my battery voltage is dropping. We're now at uh, 11 point whatever volts. My inverter's unhappy. So I'm gonna hook up my jump start pack now. And the inverter is now completely happy. And the jump start pack is outputting a lot of current. 100 amps or so of current out of that jump start pack. And bump the voltage up to 12 volts. Looks like it's uh, about 88 amps, 90 amps. I'm gonna disconnect that now because these wires are very hot. Turn off my heater. <laughs> and these little 10 gauge wires certainly can't handle that for a long period of time. This, uh, whew, that's hot. That's uh, almost burn yourself hot inside this plastic case. Uh, but that's okay, it's really only meant for one use. I like how when you hook it up, it uh, automatically turns on for about 30 seconds and then shuts off. And here you can see the red light. That means that it overheated, so it shut off and you can tell that it's very hot. But uh, that should have been enough time for you to start your car. Um, I'll disconnect this and shut it off. The actual pack here is, uh, is also quite warm, actually. It's, it's downright hot, in fact. But it did the job, you know? It, uh, even at uh, 12 volts uh, at the battery, which when you're starting your car, it could go down to 6 volts. Even at 12 volts, this thing put out 100 amps. So I'm actually quite impressed with this little guy. Uh, this will work on your car. I can pretty well guarantee it. It was fully charged when I tried it here at room temperature. When it's cold out, it won't perform anywhere near as well, but it actually lives up to its claims. So I'm rather impressed with this. So, would I recommend the Best Tech 600 amp jump start battery pack? Well, that depends on some factors. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to test whether it can really do 600 amps. It is possible it could instantaneously do 600 amps if you short-circuited it directly, which I assume is what this rating is. But uh, in any case, it easily does 100 amps, even into a good battery. If that battery is dead, I have a little doubt that I could do at least a couple hundred, two, three hundred amps uh, for a brief period of time. And that would be enough to start your car. So, yeah, it works. It's got a flashlight, it has auxiliary ports for charging your portable devices, and because it's lithium polymer, it'll stay charged for probably a year if you just throw it in your trunk. I'd recommend charging it every six months, though. In terms of overall lifetime, because, again, it's lithium polymer, you're only going to get about three years of life out of this. Not a defect of the product, that's just the battery type that's in it. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it really. Uh, now, price is always important. What would I actually pay for this? Now, if this cost you $150, I'd say, piece of crap. If this cost you 10 bucks, I'd say, buy six of them. Now, I actually did not look up the price of this before this review, and I did that on purpose. This was sent to me for free by Best Tech. Uh, but I am doing an impartial review. I'm under no obligation to uh, brag up their product. So what would I actually pay for this? Well, I don't know what it costs. Go ahead and tell me in the comments. But uh, I think this is probably worth around $50 retail. And I might wait until it's $40 on sale to buy it myself. Just my impression. But I would much prefer to have something like this than those lead acid backpack style jumpstart packs for my applications. And my application is where I want to charge it up, throw it in my car, and forget about it for six months to a year. This is still going to work. Those other ones, probably not. Plus, this is a lot smaller and more portable. So, this is Nerlar. Thanks for watching. I'd like to make a little addendum to this video like I sometimes do and mention a few things. Uh, first, you do get a carrying case with it, which is kind of nice, but I don't quite understand this cardboard box that you get with it. Um, people aren't going to package it back up in this box, so I guess you just stuff all of the stuff into the carrying case. Uh, but regardless, this is very handy. You can keep everything together. So it's nice that they give you this. I didn't really review this, but it's perfectly adequate. The charger here is nothing special, but it is a 12 volt output. And I want to mention that because you can also charge it from your car which is pretty handy. Now, that's worth mentioning because this is a 16 volt battery. And that means that inside this case, they have to have a boost circuit. And I could open this up and take a look at it here, but 
Inside here they have a boost circuit to charge the battery, which is pretty neat. They could have just had you charge it from a wall and uh, didn't let you charge it from a car because this would be a 24 volt output or something and they'd have an LDO to knock it down to 16 volts. But that's pretty handy. Now, some people might say that uh, these leads are excessively short. And I want to mention the technical reason why they are this short. And that's because if you have long leads and high currents, you have to worry about inductance. Inside this magic box, as we saw, there are some circuitry items in here. There's uh, some FETs and some diodes, etc. Now, the avalanche rating of those FETs is going to be sufficient for some sort of arc event, um, a make and break event on these leads with a lead length that is this long, a foot or so, whatever this happens to be, third of a meter if you're in Europe. In any case, there's some inductance in all of this stuff, and when you make a connection, hundreds of amps can flow. When you break that connection, that amperage still wants to flow. That's what inductance does. It still wants that amperage to go down the wire. And it can yield very high voltages on these circuits. And the avalanche rating of those FETs, meaning it can dump energy through those FETs, even though you exceed the voltage rating of them, is going to be adequate to protect them. But if you had a 10-foot lead, you're probably going to fry this thing. So that's why these are short. Now, these are 10 gauge, which is completely inadequate for 600 amps. However, that's not a problem. Um, that's for cost reasons more than anything, but this thing really is meant to supply 100 amps or greater for a few seconds at the most. And it takes time for all these wires to heat up. So I don't really see that as a deficiency. Um, inside here you have really quite high quality stuff. Uh, so this isn't really the limiter, it's the cabling and the battery pack that's the limiter. So in that respect, it's designed pretty well. And I want to mention too, uh, this. Um, this is lithium polymer batteries, is what they call it. I'm quite confident, however, that is not really lithium polymer. That's kind of a term that's thrown around loosely. This is most likely just a standard lithium ion. Um, the, uh, the soft packs inside here. And I want to mention battery life. For something like this, you stress these lithium batteries extremely hard when you pull hundreds of amps out of them. It is not good for these batteries. But that's okay, because you only do it a handful of times. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's irrelevant. What matters is storage. And Best Tech actually thought about the storage life. They could have charged this thing up to uh, 4.2, 4.3 volts a cell. Fully charged for lithium batteries, normally 4.2. You can overcharge them to about 4.5 and get quite a bit more capacity out of them. And some of the cheap brands do that. It's not safe, but they do it. Best Tech didn't choose to do that. They're only charging these to about 4.1 volts a cell, which I applaud them for, because that means that when you throw this into your hot car, hopefully in the trunk where it's not quite as hot, it will actually last for probably about five years, assuming the battery quality is, is pretty decent. And I also want to mention that if you want to store this thing and have it last a long time, don't charge it fully. Charge it to about 75% and put it in your car. That's going to about double the life of this. This should last you about 10 years if you treat it right and still be useful 10 years from now. If you store it 100% charged and keep it in the passenger compartment where it gets to be very hot during the summer, this may only last you uh, three or four years. But it is, is designed pretty well that way. They don't charge the battery up all the way, and that results in longer battery life. And I also want to mention the cost thing. Uh, I didn't look up the cost of jumpstart packs before the video, and I was a little bit unfair. Uh, this at uh, $50, $60, $70 really is a pretty good deal. Um, I looked at uh, other options after I made the video, and this is competitive with other offerings. And if you compare this to a lead acid battery, which is not the appropriate technology for a jumpstart pack, this wins. So I would recommend this product or something like it for a, an emergency jumpstart need. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people also use these simply for the USB outputs because they should work quite well for that. I mean, this is portable and it has, uh, I forget the capacity, I think it says on here, 
Yeah, 10 amp hour lithium battery. So you can charge your phone, recharge your computer if you have a computer that can charge from USB port. Um, this thing is, uh, is a pretty universal, handy item, so I really like it. Anyway, this is Nurlnar, and thanks for watching.